Let's start, let's start the talk. We'll just go straight into the so into the actual derivation of Bender's decomposition. So now in this case we have so you might notice now we've got the original problem, but now the the variable the second stage variables are now discontinuous, and so we rely on that for the duality components of and that they will help us in terms of performing the decomposition. Okay, so what we do is actually we've placed that second stage with what's called a value function. So we have this value function, and then we actually take the dual form of this value function. So one thing that we want to see here is that the in a dual form, the sub the the feasible region does not depend on x. It's actually the the objective function that is the thing that only depends on x. And we use this property in terms of to be able to define the optimality and feasibility cuts. But what's important is actually for the implementation point of view, we actually use the primal form. And that is, um, I guess, for simplicity in terms of how we actually handle this in step. So taking this dual formulation, we now actually replace that value function because it's now a max function. So we'll have a min of a max. So we can replace that value function with the variable phi. And now we have a constraint where phi has to be greater than or equal to the, the optimal objective of this value function. And as I said on the previous slide, the value function, the feasible region of that of the dual value function does not depend on x. And so now we can describe this, the, describe the feasible region as a set of extreme points and extreme rates. And we can use that in terms of our reformulation to be able to apply Bender's decomposition. Okay, so if we have the set of extreme points, and so we define that as O, and the set of extreme rays, which is F. And so we use O and F because they represent optimality and feasibility cuts. We actually get achieve an original uh, equivalent formulation of the original problem. Now the set of extreme points and extreme rays is significantly larger, it will result in a significantly more constraints than if we had an original problem. So this, this equivalent formulation is actually not that practical to solve. And so that's why we use a delay constraint generation algorithm. And so this delay constraint generation algorithm, I guess, is the heart of Bender's decomposition. And so what we have here is what's a classified a cut generating LP. And so I've reform, renamed this to being, so the objective value is going to be Z of X hat. And then the, it'll be the solution to that, that value function. So now we actually have the primal form of that value function, but now with X hat actually being fixed. And so we take this value function, or the, this sub problem, and now we have a, a formulation for the Bender's decomposition master problem, which is where we replace the set O with a subset of the, of, of the, phase, of the extreme points, and F is replaced with a subset of the extreme rays. And this gives us a subset of the optimality and feasibility cuts. Now, when we get solve that master problem, we'll get an X hat. And then with this X hat, we solve the, our sub problem. And if X induces an infeasible instance, then we get a dual ray. And that is used to generate a feasibility cut. If we get a feasible instance of, the, of that sub problem, then we end up with a dual extreme point, and then, we end, and then we can use that to generate an optimality cut. And so we use this auxiliary variable, which is an underestimator of the optimal sub problem objective. And this is used to determine whether we are optimal or not and when we need to generate cuts or not. So that brings us to the implementation side of, uh, of Bender's decomposition. Now, the traditional method, and this is what I guess you see in a lot of textbooks, is this very straightforward, main, it really looks like a three, it's a three-step algorithm, really. So we have, we solve the master problem, and then from that master problem, we'll get an X hat, then we solve the sub problem, and then from that subproblem, it's either going to be infeasible or feasible. If it's infeasible, we say that the objective value is infinity. If it's infeasible, we get the, oh, sorry, if it's feasible, then we get the objective value as being Z of X hat. We check whether Z of X hat is greater than the phi, which has come from the solution to the master problem. If it is greater than phi, then we add a cut. Then we go back and then solve the master problem. It could be multiple cuts because the subproblems could be decomposed into multiple subproblems. But, uh, so in, but this is a, the general structure. Now, it's a quite an easy concept, this, uh, this implementation. However, there can be a lot of overhead, especially if the master problem is a MIP, because if it's a MIP, you're solving a MIP from scratch every time. And that means you're gonna have to destroy the branch and bound tree and then restart. 
there are re-optimization techniques that are now available, but in, in most cases you are going to be generating, you, you can't warm start a MIPS. So unfortunately the, you got, there's a lot of overhead involved in this process. Now we can use the, you can use features of modern MIPS solvers, in particular cut callback methods, which exist in, in, all, in all, modern, all modern MIPS solvers. And so this allows you to generate cuts at a number of different stages throughout the solving process. Now, Leon actually provided a, a, a nice schematic of the skip solving process. And in one part he had solve as just being just one box of that, of that process. Now, in terms of the, this is, this is a bit more involved in terms of a few more details about what actually happens in that solve stage. And so if we go through the solving process here, we have initialization, then pre-solving. And then once we do pre-solving, we go into the branch and bound process. And so this branch and bound process goes through node selection and then into node processing. Within node processing, we have a lot of, a lot of different stages that, that, that it passes through. We, um, really, once we saw, so the most important there is solving the LP. We could be pricing or generating cuts. And then once we get a solution to the LP, we want to check whether that is integral or not. If it's, a, if it's an integer feasible solution, then we can go back to node selection. If it's, a not, if it's not integer feasible, then we need to do branching. If it's LP infeasible, then we need to, then, then we can apply conflict analysis and then, and then cut off that node. So through branching, we go into primal heuristics. Now primal heuristics actually happen at a number of different stages, but we, this is in simplified form. And then we go back into node selection. Now in terms of um, the standard vendor's decomposition or standard implementation, we have this, so what we'll do is go through this whole process and then once we get to solving the problem to solving the MIPT optimality, we would stop. And then that will give us our X hat and then we can generate a cut. So we're losing all this other, so we, we have to go through all this solving process and actually ignore everything that we, that we see until we get to the end. In terms of the more modern approach, so this is the branch and cut approach, we've actually got a couple of extra steps where we can generate vendors cuts. So for the moment, ignore the dotted lined box there. Uh, so this is where we're verifying LP solutions. We just actually want to look at the verified vendors decomp. So at this point, this is where we actually take integer feasible solutions. And then, I, and then this would be our X hat and determine whether we need to generate a cut or not. So from that, so in that verified vendors decomp, we'll take an X hat and then if, the, if it's not, if, if our Z of X hat is greater than the five for that particular node, then we'll generate a Bender's cut and then we'll solve the LP again. And so all these, these Bender's, Bender's cuts are being generated while processing the node. We also have an additional point once we're actually solving the primal heuristics, we can actually get X hats from the primal heuristics and then we can use that to verify the subproblem and then generate cuts accordingly. So the Bender's decomp LP, which is another constraint handler, is actually used to verify solutions that are not guaranteed, they're not already shown to be integer feasible. So these are just solutions that come directly from the LP. And this is part of the a classical enhancement approach called the three phase method, where you would actually generate cuts from a relaxation of the master problem. Okay, so in terms of the implementation of the Bender's decomposition framework within SKIP, there are so as you saw in Leon's talk, there are a number of different plugins that we are, that, that exist within Skip. And so the Bender's decomposition extends those plugins, but also adds new plugins to Skip. So first of all, the light, so we've got Skip in the middle there and we have the, the light that the next shade of blue up is, is actually what's an extension of Skip's current, current plugins. So we have an SMPS file reader, which is for stochastic MPS files. And so that is where you can define, so it's used to define stochastic programs. And then you also have a Bender's decomposition constraint handler. And so this constraint handler provides the interface between the skip core and the Bender's decomposition core. So within the Bender's decomposition core, what we have there is actually the subproblem solving loop where we manage the solving of the, solving of the subproblems and also the generation of the cuts. And we also have some other internal, and we have internal subproblem solving methods. So in order for your user to implement a Bender's decomposition within Skip, you have the opportunity to use the default Bender's decomposition plugin. And so this is a new plugin type that has been added to Skip 
as, as from 6.0. And so this default plugin, and so I'll explain that on, to the next, on the next slide, it allows you to just use the, all the internal solving methods of the, skip, um, of the Bender's Decomposition Core. You can also define your own custom Bender's Decomposition plugin, and this allows you to define your sub-problem methods, uh, sorry, your sub-problem solver methods, and then also allow you to in, add your own heuristic, uh, add your own enhancement approaches. We also have a new plugin type, which is the Bender's Cut plugin. And so by default, we include four cut types, classical optimality and feasibility cuts, the Laporte and Louvo integer cuts, and then the no good cuts. So we have the possibility to extend the cuts that can be used within any implementation of Bender's decomposition, or you could, um, or you could write your own, to be, own cuts to be used with your own custom decomposition methods. The way you actually use the Bender's decomposition framework is that uh, first of all, you will, can use, you can provide it using the, you can provide an instance in the SMPS format. And so this format consists of three types, a call file, a time for the state, time file for the stages. So the call file is just an MPS file. And so you have a time file for the stages to define which is your first and your second stage, and then stochastic information. So they will be able to determine what your sub problems are. The second stage is to actually use the deck, deck format. So as, per, as part of skip seven, this was a new implementation and this is something, a new way in actually to be able to use the Bender's decomposition framework. And so the deck format sort of by, allows you to bypass this SMPS format. And so you can provide an instance in any format and then you can define what is your, you to determine your sub problems based upon this deck format. So you can define which constraints go into which sub problems and then what constraints go into the master problem. And so the way you use this is by access, you access it through parameter, uh, by, so you provide a deck file and then you access this by parameters to indicate that you want to use Bender's decomposition. The third option is to implement your own Bender's decomposition, oh sorry, one step ahead of myself there. So to use the default Bender's decomposition plugin. And so this can be done by using the, so within your own custom solver, calling the Bender's decomposition plugin with this function. So skip create Bender's default, and you provide it the master skip instance, an array of sub problem skip instances. And then because this is C, you need to know how many skip instances there are. And so you need to define the number of sub problems. The fourth option is to use a custom Bender's decomposition plugin. And so you would write your own, you could write your own sub problem solving methods, but at the very least, you need to define a mapping between the master problem and sub problems. And also you have to register the sub problems with the Bender's decomposition framework. And then finally, you can use um, Bender's mode in GCG. And so this is a, an automated approach. So it's suggested that you use these detection methods because they're designed to detect in text structures that are better suited to Bender's decomposition. And so if you use, um, if you set the Bender's mode in GCG and provide a general MIP instance, Struct, some structure will be detected and then it will be solved using Bender's decomposition. Okay, so that was, that's the, um, I guess the end of my introductory talk to the Bender's framework. So I'd now like to ask if there's any, um, if there's any questions that people might have about that and, um, or any other features within, or anything also related to Bender's decomposition. Thank you, Steve, for the presentation. So we have a question. The first one from Mohsin Rahmani. Is it possible to use skip for standard benders? So um, I, I'm guessing standard benders as in that standard implementation that I spoke about um, at the start. Um, so if it is the standard implementation, then um, unfortunately, no. So we can't. So the, the benders framework is not available to do that. Uh, you, can use the, you can use skip to implement the standard benders, um, the benders algorithm. Uh, but you'd have to have write your own implementation to be able to do that. So there is no, uh, so we don't have a general framework to do the standard implementation. But this implementation cannot make use of any um, parts that have already included in the, in the vendor's framework in SIP. Uh, so that's, uh, yeah, so that's actually something I haven't uh, considered. So there is a, so you could potentially use the cut generation methods. Mm -hmm. So that would be available because they, they are in some way standalone from the internal skip methods. So you could potentially use them as for, to be able to generate cuts for within the standard implementation. Mm -hmm. 
we have another question from uh, Chenga Wang. Uh, he's asking if this uh, problem is integer, how do you add the cut? Yes, yeah, so if the sub problem is integer, so I, I, I didn't go into the details about the, the specific conditions that we require. So mm -hmm. the, we don't actually, so we can't generate integer cut for a general mixed energy programs. So we require that the, the master problem to be pure binary. And then if it's pure binary, we can generate cuts if from a mixed integer sub problem. And so the, the cut that we generate is what's called a Laporte and Louveau cut. And so this is in some ways, it's like a, um, what, what, what you would call a, uh, I guess, a, it's like a, a no good cut with a bound. And so that, so when you, it allows you to provide an underestimation of your sub problem objective by using this, by using the, the, the no good and no good cut plus also the objective value of the sub problem. So if the sub problem is actually a mixed integer program and it's infeasible, then we can use just a standard no good cut. And so there is potential to strengthen that. Uh, so there is a potential to use combinatorial vendors cuts. And so that is something of interest to be able to look into. Um, and that is something we should be implementing hopefully for the next release to be able to have a stronger, mm -hmm. no good cuts. Uh, however, the reason we don't do that is because most of the instances we're looking at have, uh, have a complete recourse. So we don't need to worry about having integer no good cuts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's true, it could open a way to, um, to a range of applications. Yeah. So we yeah. have uh, we have another question from mm -hmm. Biko. So he's saying maybe this is more general vendors question and not much script related. But yeah, Steve also is the right person to ask. He's asking if can vendors be applied when your sub problem is quadratically constrained. Um, yes, actually. So skip. So skip can actually handle these cases now, and so mm -hmm. that was an extension part of skip seven. So if we have, so if if it's a so a convex nonlinear program, mm -hmm. actually applying vendors is uh, in some ways as straightforward as applying vendors decomposition to a, to a continuous, so when your sub problem is an LP. So we, the, in, for a convex nonlinear program, we can still uh, get a dual solution and that dual solution can be used to generate a standard optimality or feasibility cut. And so we actually have that within Skip. Uh, so Stefan Vigesco did quite a lot of work in, uh, in helping us put that together. And so we, yeah, so if you, if you do have, uh, so you can provide that problem to, um, to Skip and, and solve it. Now, one trick that you might want to consider if you have a quadratically constrained program is actually to add in some, I guess, linking constraints to your sub problem. So this is a, so you can duplicate all the variables that exist within, so duplicate all the master variables and then actually have a linking constraint. And then you only actually have to fix what is your linear constraints and not actually your quadratic constraints. Mm -hmm. And so you don't have any fixings within these quadratic constraints, which makes it easier to generate that cut. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing that we have to, one thing that I, I should say is that if it's quadra quadratically constrained, you have to be careful with bilinear constraints, uh, bilinear terms. And so I did say that it has to be convex. Now for bilinear terms, if your master variable is one of the terms in a bilinear term, then you can't, it's, you can't apply benders to that quadratic sub problem. In, it's, not, it's not easy to apply. So then the techniques I, I couldn't, I, I don't know immediately off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. So that's something that you have to pay attention to. Uh, in terms of a quadratically constrained program that is a mixed integer nonlinear program, so that is still possible. And so in that case, we'd actually treat that as well as uh, a constraint integer program. And so we can then use the Laporte and Louveau integer cuts and also the no good cuts. But in that case, we'd actually require that the master problem is a pure binary problem. Mm -hmm. We have another question from Chish Darati. He's asking for multivariable formulation. How do we decide which variables go into master problem and sub problem? 
does having more decision variables into the subproblem compared to the master improves the time for solution? So this is also generally Bender's uh, design question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so in that case, it, it's actually not. It, there's, there's no real straight answer for that one. So we have. So it could be. So it, it, a lot of it depends on structure. So it, it actually can be quite valuable to have a good structure in your subproblem. And it's, uh, and it's also, you'd like to have a subproblem that can be solved fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. Because if it's, it's if, if the subproblem, if the subproblem is not solved quickly, then you could end up with a lot of, so the, the subproblem is generally solved a lot of times within skip. Now, this is something that it's a, an issue from, I guess, something that happens within the branch and cut approach, you end up with a lot of those X hat solutions that have to be verified by vendors decomposition. And so if your sub problem is expensive, it slows down your algorithm significantly. So in that case, you could act the standard implementation may actually be faster than the, than, than the branch and cut approach. And so if you can actually get a sub problem that is fast, then within the branch and cut approach, that is quite valuable because because you are calling to that subproblem a lot of times, the speed is actually important. However, mm -hmm. you, you don't want to spend, you don't want to have a master problem that is too difficult because every, you have to add a cut and then resolve. But yeah. within the branching cut, you are only solving that master problem once. So that's really only the re-optimization, but still you have to, you, you're still solving a difficult master problem. So there is a bit of a balance that you have to look at mm -hmm. there. So I, unfortunately, I can't really give you a straight answer on that. Uh, so we, so it's really something you have to test. Now, one thing you could do is actually use GCG to try and find good structures. Mm -hmm. And so that's actually a good way to run structure detection to identify if there's any good structures in, in the problem that you could use. Yeah, it's problem dependent. If I, if I might add something, so uh, using GCG to uh, trying out the uh, structures and now with the new decomposition structure within skip seven, uh, you can also be prompted with some statistics uh, on those structures that give you uh, more insight on the coverage of the zeros on your matrix of constraints, for example. So this also could uh, help you give, in, give you insights about um, which, uh, how to decompose your problem in the sense. Uh, I missed a question from Philippe before too. So he's been, uh, he's been saying that uh, he has not been using skip yet is asking what do you think is the quickest option to get started with vendors in skip considering that he wants to use multiple subproblems so i actually think the quickest way would be to use the deck format so that uh, mm -hmm. that would be the fastest approach if you have your if you can define your problem in a in in a in a mip and then and then you want to and so if it can be if you can define a compact form then actually the deck format is actually a very quick way to start using vendors decomposition because all you need is an MPS or an LP file and then a file that de defines which constraints go into the, into the sub problem and what goes to the master problem. Mm -hmm. And then that will allow you to then just use a standard implementation of vendors. And then there's also a lot, there's also enhancement techniques available. So you can test whether it would be, it could be a potential to use that. So if, that, if it's not possible to write this in an LP or an MPS, then mm -hmm. you might have to go down. So there, there's a little bit, it becomes a little bit more difficult. So you might want to look at the SMPS files. And so that's um, a little bit more challenging because you have to understand what the SMPS format's all about. And that's a bit, so the, the three different file formats takes a little bit more understanding. Mm -hmm. And then the, I guess the, yeah, so they're, they're probably the easiest ways to get started with it. So I won't go into how to actually do this with a um, with uh, like a custom implementation, but that I, I, that's how I, that's how I get started. He's also adding a second part to his question uh, by saying, "What would be the computationally fastest option? Not only just the easy way to get started, but also to get um, good computational reasons as um, as fast yeah. as possible." Yeah, so I would still say with the so the deck format. Because uh, so that's so something that's quite nice about the deck format. It's it's very easy to use, and the implementation within Skip is 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 quite it's quite simple to to really work with. So that's um that's quite uh, quite a good good thing to work work on. And then that because so a lot of enhancement techniques are available just by the default, and so we're for bend, enhancements for vendors. So 
you don't have, so you can actually switch these on and off and test different features. And so that will allow you to use a good implementation of vendors decomposition to test whether it is actually effective or not. So another, another advantage of actually using this deck file uh, is that if you actually have the problem in an MPS, so you can actually go to our competitor and, uh, and test it with Cplex if that's, if that's an option for you. So mm -hmm. Cplex allows you to apply a standard vendors decomposition. They don't, mm -hmm. if, if your problem has integer, integer variables in the sub problem, then they can't handle that. But for a standard, for a problem with only continuous variables, so yeah, continuous variables in the sub problem, Mm -hmm. then that's a, it's a way to test so you could actually compare between the two if you want to so you said they can or they cannot handle integer variables into sub problem yeah cplex can't handle cannot. integer variables yeah so they cannot yeah right yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh yes we have another question from uh, kirish so he's asking for multi-variable formulation how do we decide which variables go into must oh, oh sorry yeah. this is the the question that that's asked yeah. before yeah. Philip. Uh, no, uh, the, this question is from Mohsen Brahmani. He's asking how heuristic solutions can contribute where every solution they provide is infeasible for the original problem. He assumes that, uh, I, he says, I assume that heuristic solutions are used only through enforce methods. Um, so the, so the heuristics are, so heuristics that I was talking about there is actually heuristics that have been performed on the master problem. So, mm -hmm. so they will always be, so that will always be feasible for the master problem if they, if they get, I guess, selected. So they may not be feasible, they may not be optimal for the original problem, but they're not necessarily infeasible. So mm -hmm. they could actually provide an obje objective value that is greater than, I guess, yes, than, than the optimal. So you can use that X hat, even if it's, so you can use that X hat to just identify whether you are actually getting a good solution. And then also one advantage to using the primal solutions to generate cuts is that they are more likely to be, well, so then they, they could be in the interior of the feasible region because mm -hmm. they are integer feasible points. So they're, they're not necessarily lying on the, on the, the lattice points. So they're not necessarily lying on the, um, on the convex hull. And so, well, sorry, they're not lying on the polyhedron. Okay. Yep. So they, so because they're on the interior, you are actually getting some of these cut enhancement approaches uh, that, that are, have been developed. So like uh, Magnanti and Wong tried to, they use a core point because it's in the interior of the feasible region. So with primal solutions, you do actually get those sorts of, those enhancements for free essentially. Mm -hmm. So that is a way to generate stronger cuts by using the primal feasible solutions. Mm -hmm. um, oh, sorry, the solutions from heuristics. And so that actually, I've, I've ran some tests on this and the, the impact of using, of generating cuts from, the generating cuts from solu primal solutions, so from solutions from heuristics heuristic. is significant, it makes a significant improvement on the right. solution approach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have a question from Panta. Uh, he's asking, does GCG uses uh, does GCG use vendor decomposition for cuts? Yeah, so I guess yeah. the, that might be with the slight confusion of the naming. So yeah, so GCG, <laughs> yeah. given that GCG stands for generic column generation, yeah. uh, they actually don't. So it, it's actually the vendors and the column generation are separate algorithms that are available within GCG. Mm -hmm. So. So it's just that uh, the structure detection of GCG is being used in, in conjunction with the Benders framework in Skip. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we have a, a marginal question from uh, Andre Di Stefano. He's saying, I've been using Groby with the Python API for Benders decomposition using the callback functionality. Um, can, can call, which is call a function in which uh, I can generate my constraints during the solving process at a given point. For example, when I find an integer solution. And he's asking, is this approach supported in Skip using the PySkip opt interface? Uh, yes, yeah. That, that, yeah, definitely is. So the, so I actually you could, so I, I'm, I'm not sure whether this is, Oh, so yeah, it's using callback functionality. So that, that's, yeah. so we, we can actually use, you can use the Benders framework within Skip. So again, you can use all, all the, 
those, those methods that I described on how to actually use the framework is still, oh, sorry, they say skip. So you can use them with PySkip opt. So mm -hmm. like uh, apply, supplying a SMPS file, the deck file, or, or using just the custom, uh, the default vendors implement, uh, vendors implementation. Mm -hmm. uh, so that would, that may not work. The, the default may not work for, um, for Andrea because they, if, if you've got your own custom solving methods, and mm -hmm. so you might want to have your own, uh, you might want to define your own vendors decomposition solving methods. Mm -hmm. And so that would then require a vendors decomposition plugin, which is also available within PySkipOpt. So there is an example on how to actually do this um, within the PySkipOpt distribution. So that's, that would be, it's actually called, so it's within the test file um, folder. So it's test underscore customized vendors. And so that's mm -hmm. something that you could use to, to, you can have a look at that to see what, um, whether that, that helps in, in your case. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just writing the name of the example for people in the chat. So yeah. mm -hmm. uh, we have a follow-up um, question with Philippe. So he's asking, are there any example files that show how the usage of vendors within Skip? Yeah, so we have so one example uh, that's the stochastic capacitative facility location problem. And so that's within the examples directory. Mm -hmm. And so that's using the, so that that's using the, the default vendors decomposition plugin. So it's, uh, it, it creates the sub problems and the master problem within a, so within the prob data and then within that prob data, it will then it will, it will perform, perform the vendors decomposition by calling this uh, mm -hmm. vendors, create vendors default okay. um, function. So that, that, that's, that's, pro, that's the best example we have at this stage. So there is, so for the next release, we will have a, an application where we actually have developed a custom vendors decomposition plugin. And so that will, unfortunately that's not available at this stage, um, but it will be available in the, in the next release. And so, as I said, there is a PySkip opt example as yes, well. That's, um, that shows well. how to use it, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have two sort of, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, we have a question regarding the, um, one of the improvements uh, of Vendor's framework in Skip 7, which is the parallelization um, feature. So um, I have a question saying, uh, is there any parallel strategy in Skip for solving Vendor sub-problems when the problem is separable? Yes, uh, so we have actually two types of parallelization that can be used with Vendor's decomposition. So we have the, so in, in the case that you're talking about is uh, parallelization of the sub-problems. And so that case yeah. is, so that we use OpenMP for parallelization in that case. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you can solve all your sub problems um, in parallel. That now we, we also have parameters to define how many threads you want to use. So just by default, mm -hmm. you use the total number of threads that are available on your machine, mm -hmm. but you could actually change that to use a, a smaller number of threads if you wanted to. Okay. And also, because for load balancing, you may want to change the, the order at which the subproblems are being solved, because you may, so for example, you might want to solve the harder ones first or the easier ones first. That's, um, and what's harder or easier could be defined based on, you might want to define that. And so mm -hmm. it, you can actually provide a sorting method to determine what's, how to actually order these subproblems. Mm -hmm. Now, the... So we also have a different parallelization method, which is actually using the UG framework. And so you can parallelize the branch inbound tree as well. And so that, so you can use, you can actually apply vendors decomposition. So you, with the UG framework, you can apply vendors decomposition on supercomputers and actually run this in a large scale tree, tree search, parallel tree search. And so that you can actually combine both the, the sub problem parallelization and also okay. the tree search parallelization. Okay. So it's a framework of uh, shared and shared memory and distributed memory parallelization. Yes, that, that's, that's correct. Yeah. So I have one question for everyone who's here. If, um, so I'm curious if anyone's actually tried to use the Bender's, the Bender's decomposition framework in Skip. So it's, I'm not, I haven't really heard from too many people as to whether it's been used. So could you maybe uh, put in the chat? Yeah, this is... Uh... This is Mohsen Ramani. So yeah, so I used it. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's it's a great product. And um, I I have a question, another question. Uh, I asked two questions so far. Mm -hmm. So 
is there any compar comparison between the the CPLEX benders and a skip ben benders? Yeah, so not. I haven't done this for a while. So the so I gave I had a comparison. So I made a comparison uh, for the initial release, and so this was actually comparing uh, GCG with with CPLEX because I was looking at this automated vendors that they had. And so with their automated vendors, they actually just take all the continuous variables and put it into the subproblem. And so it's actually quite similar, similar performance to what you'd expect for skip. So skips around about, I guess, two times, uh, that's two times solid and, and then, then CPLEX. And so that's, so I think that's, I think that's about right. But this is, this is from June to 2018. So then also before a lot of the new enhancements that have been done, but also CPLEX Benders has done a lot of enhancements as well. So you might see next week um, at IPCO, there's a talk by uh, the, the guys from CPLEX who, about, the, about the implementation work that they've done on their vendors decomposition. So I, like from, so CPLEX is definitely faster than SKIP. And so I, I'm, not, I'm never gonna be able to, we're never gonna be able to beat them. That's, uh, they've already, because they've always got, they've got CPLEX under the hood. And so um, that's, just, that's just gonna be a matter of, of that, that they're always gonna win. The, I guess the advantage that Benders ha the skip framework has is that it's got it's more more flexibility and actually is able to handle more problem classes and so that's what we're tr that's the area that we're trying to look at a bit more. Mm -hmm. Also within skip it's a, um, a research framework so if you you guys have like an idea I would like to to test it in a in a flexible manner this is something that would be challenging to achieve with uh, with commercial soldiers so. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we have a question from uh, Tango Wang. So he's asking, will you release a user's manual for skip by CPLEX with Ruby? I can find only the Doxygen documentation online, whereas it's not easy for a beginner to apply um, yeah. Do, yeah, you, so, uh, <laughs> do you have an answer for that? <laughs> I, 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 would have a, I would have to refer them to Doxygen, so <laughs> he, is already, he is already call, doesn't yeah. like it much. but. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, so with every release, there is, of course, the release report of SIP so that, um, that mostly um, explains the, the research, the scientific ideas behind the new features and the more um, user practical um, documentation, which is provided by Doxygen. Um, I'm sorry that you, you find it not so user friendly, but in case you need the help or you get stuck with SIP at any point, as was mentioned during the introductory talks, there are a lot of channels to reach um, a large group of developers. You can always uh, write to us at the skip at .de. Uh, for, um, .de. Uh, you can also check the archive for, um, for other similar issues that other users have faced. Um, the Doxygen documentation, perhaps, um, I, I would advise you to go in order. So uh, don't try to go to to your your section of interest right away, but try to go through the beginner steps and take them step by step. Perhaps that would uh, would make the process a bit easier for beginner users. Yeah. So I, I believe there is maybe some some motivation to actually provide more resources for uh, for users and so part of that is this q a sessions that we have for this workshop and so the the recordings that we have now we're going to be i guess used in in part of that uh, tutorial so we, we uh, we're working towards actually providing some more resources beyond that doxygen um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, documentation so there, there is um so as christine said there is a lot of there's, there's a lot of information there uh, and so if you just go through it then you might be able to find your answer Um, we have a question from Sunil Sanjo. He's asking, could we find examples of the problem where you have implemented vendors? Um, perhaps yeah. he's asking about your own know, research. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm um, well in, in terms of so the so the, the there is a, so as I mentioned earlier, there is one example which is the uh, so we, with the stochastic capacitive facility location problem. So that's available with on the. Now within the skip distribution uh, in the examples directory. Uh, so in terms of other, so in terms of other examples, so a lot of the, so for my most recent tests and actually the things that I'm doing within skip, I'm actually using the SMPS format. So that's the main mm -hmm. format I use to you for, for Bender's decomposition. 
So that's partly because there are a lot of stochastic integer programs that are available that are in that format. And also it's a, it's the, I, the reader is like the reader works fairly well. So I, and also now I'm now been using the deck format because that's a, a new, since it's a new feature and it's quite, quite effective to use and much quicker to mm -hmm. write up a deck file than this to write up the sets index file. So in terms of the instances I've been testing with, unfortunately I haven't put them up. I need to actually um, release them. And so they should be, I, I want to put them up on my website, the instances I've used for different papers. And so that uh, I'll, I'll be looking doing that um, in the next, I guess in the next month. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have a question from Mohsen Rahmani. Thank you for the interaction, Mohsen. Yeah. So, uh, you, so you mentioned that skip doesn't work for bilinear terms. Yeah. Uh, so does that mean, uh, yeah, yeah, so the, the, the continuity of the question, does that mean that the solver fails or that means that it can get the optimal solution due to some large optimality gap there? Yeah, so, that, so it's not that skip fails. And so skip can actually handle um, handle a large class of um, of nonlinear programs. So so that's that's actually perfectly fine to have bilinear terms in skip. So what I was talking about is actually having bilinear terms in a Bender's decomposition. And so this is actually not a skip related problem. It's actually it's actually to do with the fact that if you have a bilinear term with the master variable as one of the terms in that um, in in the in the bilinear um, term, so then you, you can't actually separate that out. By separate fixing it. the master variable, mm -hmm. you'll actually have, uh, so, so by fixing the master variable, you, you can't actually get the duality. So it's actually not, so you, you, it, it's to do with the Bender's, uh, Bender's de decomposition. So you can't, you can't separate that. It's not separable in that setting. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so this is just a problem in general for Bender's. So then there might be approaches, but I'm not actually sure now where. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, we have a question from Sunil Sintum. Uh, have you come across where Benders, uh, across an example for Benders is implemented in an airline problem, like tail assignment, for example? Um, so, yes, actually, so I've, I've done work on this. Uh, so in the, oh, okay. um, so I've, I've done some work mainly on a, so this is for a sort of like a stochastic program. So I've applied Benders decomposition to solve a tail assignment problem that where I'm actually trying to manage, like find a tail assignment that is recoverable based on some certain scenarios. And so my sub problems mm -hmm. are, so themselves recovery tail assignment problems, and then the master problem is a tail assignment problem. So in terms of just the tail assignment problem, it's not actually used normally the case to apply benders. You'd normally be applying column generation because okay. that's a, 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 the, the, the separability there you have, you have a, you have uh, linking constraints as opposed to linking variables. Mm -hmm. uh, where you do have it come up in the airline context is actually if you have an integration between aircraft and crew. And so you, if you've got aircraft and crew, if you want to solve a combined problem, there'll be some constraints that provide that, that where you can have the, 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 uh, the variables, if you define your master problem as a tail assignment problem, those variables will become the linking variables for the for the crew problem, and so that mm -hmm. in this, so you can separate the, the two problems in that case and apply Bender's decomposition. Okay. So that's actually a uh, there is there are a number of papers uh, about that. Uh, so they, um, so the the so one that uh, so I guess the so one that so these actually were came about in two, in like the late two thousand. Uh, so it's two thousand and nine. There's a paper by Papadakos where it's an integrated airline planning problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have a question from Suresh asking, uh, what are some, some strategies to increase the speed of Bender's decomposition? It seems a straightforward implementation uh, is slow to convert due to increase in master's problem size or do, due to Bender's cuts, especially when the subproblem has integer variables. So yes, I did, I'm asking about speed of strategies for, for the Bender's structure and then to that, yeah. Yeah, so that's um that's a good question, and it's mm. definitely something you need to really think about when you're applying Bender's decomposition. So, Bender's decomposition is actually pretty lousy as a default implementation. It's uh, <laughs> it just doesn't it really doesn't work. And so, <laughs> if you if you want to try Bender's and then you just stop at the first implementation, then you you really like 
you will you will if if they, if that's if you think it's the best it's going to get then you know you haven't gone very far so <laughs> that's uh, because it is it's actually the it's actually a very bad algorithm so there's yeah. a lot of enhancements that you need to actually do to actually make it work and so a number of these so some of the more common ones uh, so cut strengthening techniques so Magnanti and Wong had a paper this is actually quite an old paper from I think the 80s and um, and so that one has been so that cut strengthening technique has been revised a bit more that's um, so there's been a more a one that the technique that I use within skip is actually something that was proposed by uh, Fischetti and others in 2017 mm -hmm. for a facility location problem. So that's a Fischetti paper that's in management science. Mm -hmm. And so that's a, what they call a variant of the Kelly's cutting plane method. And so that's where you try to, you progressively, so you try to find things, points in the interior of the feasible region. And so and then you use that to generate cuts. And then you have also other enhancements like, so the two or three phase method is a very common method. And so mm -hmm. the original paper of that is by McDaniel and Devine. And then it's been rehashed a number of different times. In terms of integer problems, there was actually a paper by, um, oh, I forget the group. Um, so there was a more recent paper where they looked at new cuts for integer problems, and they mm -hmm. also rehashed that, that two-phase method. Mm -hmm. um, and the Laporte and Louveau, the original Laporte and Louveau paper where they actually looked at the integer cuts also talked about this the form of the two-phase method you could use. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then you also have, um, there's, I guess, some pre-solving techniques you might want to look at. Uh, there are some heuristics, so trust region methods are also quite valuable. And so they, they're quite good to um, be able to reduce the... So what happens in vendors is that the master problem solutions can move around the feasible, like you can add a cut, and then you move a long way from where you added that cut. And so mm -hmm. then you have to add a lot of cuts um, without actually getting much improvement. Yeah. So if you use a trust region, you could then localize the cuts that you're generating. Uh -huh. And so that's a, something that you could look at as well. Now, so I'll, I'll plug my own paper on this. So the paper that I wrote for, about the Benders framework in Skip, I've actually described all the enhancement techniques that I've actually implemented as well. And so that's available. Uh, so you can find that on, the, on optimization online and also on my website. So you can look at that. So the, that, that describes the Benders decomposition implementation. And also mm -hmm. that the enhancements. Is it from this year, I think? Uh, it, it was uh, uh, from last, so the end of last. Oh, actually, no, it was this year. Yes, it was this year. Okay. Oh, no, sorry, end of last year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I would like to encourage you to actually use the Vendors <laughs> framework and yeah. get back to us with your feedback. Also, encourage you to uh, use the new decomposition structure that's part of the new SCIP release. It um, will also make a lot of um, uh, heuristic algorithms or any solution algorithm that you would like to design that would give you more insight of the, of the problem you're dealing with. So, um, we'd love to hear back from you about that as well. So. Oh, we have a last question, perhaps, mm -hmm. <laughs> before oh, yeah. we close, from Sebastian Brown. He's asking, is there any hope for an automatic identification of vendor sub-problems? Actually, so we already, we do have that, uh, actually, within yeah. GCG. Um, so you okay. can automatically detect structure within, uh, within GCG and apply vendor's decomposition. So that's, that is available, and you can actually pick the structure that you want. Uh, so... So we have so based on the detection methods. So it's it's not it's not one hundred percent perfect, but it's so what we try to do is so we can just run vendor de detection just without requiring any any structure, um, and then we have one where we actually try to go for a binary master problem. So we can use the stand like Laporte and Levo cuts and no good cuts, and the other mm -hmm. one is where we actually go for continu continuous sub problems, and that's where we can compare a bit more with CPLEX the CPLEX approach. Mm -hmm. So we can adjust uh, GCG somehow to uh, to to choose with respect to certain criteria the subproblems. Yes, yes. So that's mm -hmm. so the 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 setting files um, are available within the GCG release. So they're actually mm -hmm. if you look within GCG and in the settings directory, there's a detect detect uh, dash benders, and then there's a couple of others to go with that. So okay. you can look, look in there. We have one last question from Mohsen Rahmani. Oh, yeah. so he's asking, is it wise to drop cuts from previous iterations that are not effective? Unfortunately, not at this stage. <laughs> so. okay. 
<laughs> yeah, so it's something that it's something that we should be looking at, and it's a, I guess it's a that, that that is something that is seen to be an important feature of of vendor's decomposition, and so that is. Um, so we haven't done any research into that and in, in development as to how to actually do that effectively. Uh -huh. It's actually asking, is it wise to do it? No. Oh, is it wise? Is it? Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. So, so yeah. <laughs> I think it'd be worth testing. It's, <laughs> yeah. if you, but it, uh, so I think there's some papers that have looked into this, but uh -huh. off the top of my head, I, I couldn't give you the answer, get to tell you those papers at this stage. Mm -hmm. so you have to, uh, you have to look for them yourself. Okay, it's a research direction. Right? It is, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> what yeah. I was going to say. So, thank you, everyone. Thank you for interaction. Thank you very much, Steve. Uh, yeah, and uh, thank, thank you, thank you, Christine, for, for hosting this. <laughs>